I had been wanting to make a hutch for several years, but never could decide on a design. Then one day Mrs. Tinker was looking at Pinterest, and she came across this picture right here. We liked it a lot, but we didn't like the columns. So after some thought, we decided that this is the one I was going to build with a few modifications. Of course, there were no dimensions or scale or anything to go by in this picture, so I just had to kind of guess. I measured the space we had available and how big I wanted it, and I built it to that scale. It's very, very similar to the picture. Let's take a tour of it. Let's start with the base unit. There are two things on this that I did not build. Number one are the legs, and number two are the drawer fronts and doors. The drawers and door fronts I had left over from a previous job I had salvaged, and the legs, of course, were store-bought. I don't have a lathe to turn them. But everything else I built from scratch, including the carcass of the box. The handles are just stock handles that have a cherry cinder to them, and the top of the bar here is made up of cedar and redwood strips in between. I had some salvaged cedar from another job, but it wasn't quite wide enough to make up the whole top, so I had to put thin strips of redwood in between. There's a piece of redwood right there. It turned out pretty cool because it looks like an accent strip. I put four coats total of polyurethane on here. It was a gloss poly. I like the way the gloss looks on here. It's like a mirror finish on it. Plus it adds a lot of protection because that surface is a usable surface. As we pan back here, we're gonna take a look at the top unit. They are made separately so that you can actually get it in the house. Otherwise you would never be able to carry it. Uh, the top unit reaches to within an inch of the ceiling. So it is almost eight foot tall. The back of the unit has this homemade shiplap that I made. I just took regular one by and ran it through the router table and put a half lap on one side. And then you can see the detail of the trim up there. That actually matches the detail on the base unit as well. And as we pan over, you see the doors. I did make these top doors. Those are made from scratch. And there is the crown detail there. It's a very wide crown detail made up of four layers. Another detail I copied from the original were these bands. There's the top band. And as we pan down, you see the middle band. And then if you pan all the way down to the bottom of the bottom unit, you see the last band. This trim detail ties both the top and the bottom together. One thing this hutch does offer is plenty of storage. Mrs. Tinker and I are having a hard time filling it up with stuff. In the center here you see the fixed shelves. Plenty of room for knickknacks or crock pots. Of course on either side of the top you have the glass cabinets Inside there we put some crystal from our wedding that hasn't seen the light of day in 20 years. And as we open this door, you'll see the plate glass shelf. And if you look closely, there's several different holes so you can adjust the height depending on what size knickknacks or glassware you put in there. Let's talk about the finishes I use now. We wanted it to look old and antique, so we chose this green color. It's got a really vintage look. And because the green would be too much if we did the whole thing, we painted the background white on the top of the hutch. And of course left the cedar natural because that looks the best. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tour of the big green hutch. This is one that's definitely going to become a family heirloom. It was a lot of work to build and it took a long time, but... I really am pleased with how it turned out. Oh, and one more thing. Don't be surprised if I call you when it's time for me to move. I'm getting too old and this thing is way too heavy for me to lift by myself. Thanks for watching. See you next time.